Hello and welcome to the CNN News 18 special. India is all set for a soft landing of Chandrayaan 3. What will be the impact of it on India's future space missions and what were the challenges? Who better than India's moon man, Mr. Anna Dorai, who is joining us here. Sir, welcome. Sir, how would you see the process that has happened over the last few weeks ever since the takeoff? Satisfied with most things? Yeah, I think the so far uh, so good and uh, uh, things are going as planned and uh, very, very, very professionally it is uh, being uh, attempted to. And the preparations uh, and the preparedness and the lessons learned all put together uh, looks, I think we are back on the track. Hmm. True, back on track, just a step away from a soft yeah, landing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's recollect because since you were the project director for Chandrayaan 1 and 2, uh, a lot of learning from Chandrayaan 1 and 2 has helped Chandrayaan 3. Correct, yeah. But what were the challenges back in those days, sir, with Chandrayaan 1 and 2? Because a lot of unknowns, uncharted okay. territory as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you recall, I think, before Chandrayaan 1, mm. uh, a fairly good number of missions have gone to the moon. Mm. And nearly 69 missions have gone to the yeah. moon, even the sample return missions, even manned missions, many things happened mm. there. So in that in that backdrop, when we started 2004 about this uh, program mm. formulation, uh, definitely many eyebrows were raised and the questions were asked, mm. what what extra we are going to do? Mm. And that too with the very, very minimal budget mm. and our uh, launch vehicle also very modest. So mm. putting the things together, the challenge was even at the formulation of the, the system, uh, what way we are going to run and what way we are going to make an impact uh, for mm. this mission. Many things were questioned, but accordingly we have taken care and uh, ensured that even with the modest PSLV, we could uh, succeed at the first attempt, especially the lunar polar orbit. Uh, mm. That is not uh, people have not done, okay. leave alone landing. Yes. Okay. Even orbiting around the moon in the polar orbit, mm. not many people attempted and we have done it. But that gave a lot, lot more uh, opportunities for us mm. because by the time over the 40 years where the initial missions of moon uh, to the actually our mm. missions have gone, a good number of instrumentation for remote sensing point of view are in a mm. place. Mm. So when we carried these instruments on the moon mm. and especially this orbit around the uh, uh, polar orbits yes. uh, provides its natural uh, the rotation of the moon, mm. putting the things together, the whole moon would be uh, seen uh, by these instruments. Mm. What moon contains, how the world is the moon, I think many things we could see that. So in that process, I think uh, we had an opportunity uh, to identify the unexplored places, especially the lunar poles, mm. uh, uh, the more so-called fertile land in the moon, yes. okay, including the presence of water on the moon. Mm. I think that opened up a lot more, but that, that looking back, the challenge we converted into an opportunity mm. because all the 70 missions have gone in which yes. path versus we have taken a different path. Mm. So that uh, different path to show we are different from them, that has given us, gave us a good opportunity uh, to really, really make an uh, impactful mission, even though mission was very modest, mm. uh, even the challenges were against, but I think that gave a good opportunity uh, to make the mission uh, really, really impactful. Uh, any, any specific challenge that you recollect, sir, spending days or months on it and then overcoming it? Uh, because, as you said, it, it was a modest budget mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. so many people have spoken about how several Hollywood movies perhaps have correct, a bigger correct. budget than this. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, when looking back, uh, this uh, how to contain within the budget, hmm. okay, it calls for a, 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 a day and night thinking hmm. and uh, the simplest thing where we put it here, so nominally a mission of this caliber, when hmm. you make it a first attempt, across the globe, any aerospace industry hmm. is go for a, typically four models, hardwares, hmm. okay, you, you, you go for one verification model, hmm. uh, then one engineering model, one qualification model, then you make a flight model. Hmm. But we, we, we thought when we are talking about our modest budget, so we don't have the luxury of making four models. Mm. I think we should make only one model. Mm. Is it possible to make one model? Directly That's the flight model. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that, that was, uh, the, the, when, when that proposal was put forward to match the budget, mm. yes, to matching the budget, it's okay, but is he really, will, is really able to make uh, its impact, mm. this being a first mission, I think many, many questions were raised, but I think we made it. Mm. And beyond that, and uh, when we are going the first mission to really unravel the mm. next port, so we could carry as many instruments as possible. I think mm. that is also we accommodated, uh, starting from uh, uh, visible spectrum mm. uh, to going X-ray regime, 
low, low energy X-ray, hard energy X-ray, microwave, like that I think wide spectrum of instruments also we carried. Mm. And beyond that, another impact came when almost our project post was ready, we were about to metal cutting to start. The then President of India asked for, you are going all the way to the moon. Hmm. Okay, I think you should somehow we should ensure that you are touching in the first mission itself, touching the hmm. lunar surface, hmm. uh, along with our regular flag. I think that has that opened up another challenge, hmm. because having accepted, having accommodated uh, around 11 science instruments, how to do that? It calls hmm. for a yeah, yeah, big, big uh, thinking. And I think we came out with the, the team, we could come out with a, a, a novel uh, concept, uh, wherein uh, keeping all of the instruments same, with some more optimization uh, hmm. engineering point of view, we could conserve another 30 kg of uh, hmm. mass. That mass we put it into a moon impact probe. That in itself carried uh, along with the tricolor flag three science instrument, hmm. including a mass spectrometer. Okay, hmm. that which when we pushed it out, hmm. okay, uh, that go the initial signatures uh, when it keep falling towards the moon, intended hmm. targeted uh, uh, hmm. near South Pole. Uh, the possibility of uh, traces of water. Mm -hmm. on the moon. In the tenuous yeah. atmosphere, we have seen that. Yes. So, that means the source has to be supposed to have come from the lunar surface. So, then subsequent instruments in Chandrayaan 1, when we closely watched up to that using moon magnetic mapper or our synthetic aperture radar, mm -hmm. many, many instruments putting together, uh, we could uh, really localize, yes, the water source coming from the mm -hmm. uh, moon. So, that way, I think uh, we made every difficulties into an opportunity uh, converting into the mission. And uh, with the, that means the first mission, first uh, with the single flight model, hmm. uh, we could make the mission. True. And uh, again, with the PSL, we cannot uh, put the, the mass of around 1350 kg hmm. beyond 22,000 kilometers. Hmm. So, but we have to go more nearly uh, yes. 384,000 kilometers. But nobody has done uh, from 22,000 kilometers how the uh, uh, satellite alone is going there. Yes. I think nobody has done hmm. previously. I think we made an attempt. Okay, that attempt helped in a better way. Uh, because that helped us uh, to make our corrections because uh, uh, we have multiple maneuvers when we do. So, when we are doing the maneuver, uh, uh, what we do, what we target for versus what we achieved, we are verifying that. So, if any small deviation, we are able to correct it. So, that gave an ample opportunity to correct it such that first attempt itself getting a lunar polar orbit. That's very, very difficult mm -hmm. because if you're going near the uh, Mediterranean region, mm -hmm. it's easy even if you go for a few hundred kilometers away, also mm -hmm. you can get back. Yes. But here you have to go to the pole means you have to go to the pole only. You're coming here and you come to the pole. Oh, That's yes. the point. That is a nearly 3,84,000 kilometer away. Mm -hmm. In a few meters of few kilometers of accuracy, attaining is a really, really another technical challenge. I think we have done it. So that means you look at here, there are many hurdles or challenges, hmm. but every hurdle or challenge gave us an opportunity to prove what we can. Hmm. Even though my budget is modest, team is young, I think we have done it reasonably hmm. well. As you said, you have converted them into opportunities. Now, sir, whenever Chandrayaan 3 becomes successful, what do you assess would be the impact on India's future space missions and programs, sir? Yeah, the first and foremost, uh, it will show it is not like missions like Chandrayaan 1 or Mangalyaan, it is not an isolated success. Hmm. I think we have the team here, we have yeah. the system here. Hmm. Uh, that, that takes uh, uh, the mantle uh, uh, further and further. Hmm. Uh, that means the impact of uh, what happened Chandrayaan 1, hmm. almost similar happened for Chandrayaan 2, but now we have converted everything into a, a soft landing. Soft landing definitely technologically shows uh, 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 definitely much graduation over the uh, other mm. spacefaring nations. Not many has succeeded yes. in the, especially polar region. True. And that I think will give us uh, technically a uh, good edge for us, mm. one thing. Uh, second thing is uh, now after PSLV uh, made a, that, that mission Chandrayaan, commercially it has given a lot of impact for the people to come towards PSLV. Hmm. Now, this being a GSL Mark III, yes. okay, yeah. I think commercially I expect uh, this will also hmm. will give a brand uh, for the, um, uh, hmm. this point of view. Beyond all these things, I foresee a, a possible uh, back to the moon in a big way, hmm. okay, uh, international players hmm. are concerned. I think in that uh, India can play a meaningful role hmm. uh, technologically hmm. and uh, as well as an equal partner more. 
okay mm. if you if you look at here the international space station mm. uh, india was not part of it and even i myself uh, advocating not need not be for that because that model was slightly different mm. but whereas the uh, possible international lunar space station mm. Uh, mm. Uh, that i think when it's coming india can play a really really meaningful role mm. because india has an edge Mm-hmm. uh against others and uh, this mission the, though it is a robotic mission unmanned mission mm-hmm. uh, i think to start with the international space station will be like that mm-hmm. you know, to build up the infrastructure there yeah. and do. and beyond that also i know a modest uh, uh, research is already going on some few phd cells have come uh, how to make a habitat there yeah uh, in the institute who plays and mm-hmm. i myself was guiding some of the phd oh, okay. is there so the, that 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 of uh, things uh, keep happening uh, mm-hmm. here because uh, fortunately we have a place where the lunar simulant we can make uh, uh, with near prem serum yes. which is monologically is uh, almost similar to the recolith whatever we are mm-hmm. seeing there so that way i think we are uh, making use of these opportunities uh, so that tomorrow a modest colony comes human colony comes in the moon mm-hmm. i think india will definitely get prepared also for that uh, I, i the way in which uh, artemis mission is coming mm-hmm. the main the way in which lunar resource where russia is coming the way in which uh, china is ambitious is replacing mm. and the way in which even europe are mm. coming back together all put together i think india can put forward a possible uh, the suggestion of having a international lunar space station to start with mm. subsequently keep evolving into a, a possible lunar colony something like that for the to start with it may be research mm. but definitely it can uh, will in uh, possibly when we are doing all these things uh, we may find i i'm hopeful that we may find Uh, the some of the rare minerals uh, mm-hmm. in the lunar surface yes. that probably can feed back to the humanity back to the earth yeah. itself so all putting together i think we are in a reasonably good position yeah. uh, so that we are not uh, passive spectators like whatever happened yeah. in the 70s when the yeah. cold war was there true so now i think uh, back to the moon i think india will play a active active player in that true. so towards that chandrayaan 3 definitely makes a mark yeah. sir you spoke about renewed interest in uh, the lunar surface and moon itself uh, now one keen interest is russia's lunar mission luna 25 oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, a lot of interest on the overlapping timeline of chandrayaan 3 and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, russia's lunar mission and many asking how is it that uh, their mission has reached at a much shorter time okay. than chandrayaan 3 how do you see this sir it's not a competition but this keen interest yeah no no you recall even uh, uh, after chandrayaan on itself mm. uh, russia showed a very very keen interest to work with us mm. that's how originally chandrayaan 2 has been configured mm. in 2009 uh, we had an mou and mm. accordingly we started even working along with russia mm. uh, the configuration being uh, something similar mm. uh, an unmanned mission will be landing on the near the uh, lunar south pole and uh, having its own rover mm. and uh, so that way we our mission configuration was originally la- to launch by gslv mm. having a lander by russian lander mm. and ha- and uh, and an uh, booster uh, mm. propulsion system whatever we have done that something mm. by indian made and india made a six wheel rover i think mm. this combination was work was was original configuration but somewhere in the 2011 time frame mm. uh, due to some technical reasons uh, uh, that collaboration could not go ahead Okay. So, uh, but even that time, you look at here, the mission was named as Chandrayaan Two by Indian side. Hmm. The lunar resource and the Luna was named by Russian, Russian side. side. Okay. But now you look at here, technically, even though we have Pana Bird, hmm. and the combination remains same. I mean, hmm. they are coming out with the, their own uh, Luna uh, hmm. landing system, but without a land, without a rover, rover, yes, and without a propulsion system also. Hmm. You know, on its own, it's going. Hmm. But of the launcher being the heavy launcher, they have, and hmm. they have the capability to put it directly to the Uh, luna surface i think that they have done it yeah. uh, but but not only starting that uh, you look at here uh, this is not a, 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 a simple rush it mm-hmm. is nearly more than a decade people are working yes. i know that russia afterwards reconfigured the whole mission mm-hmm. and uh, russia had a couple of delays also i think mm-hmm. when they are coming here it is a couple of delays also with that they came mm-hmm. and uh, it, it, i think probably originally what 2009 we thought both will go together hmm. though it is not physically not together hmm. i think uh, almost go, going uh, the timelines are timelines matching. are matching so hmm. i i foresee only that way only hmm. uh, i don't see any anything but uh, it definitely uh, russia showed a keen interest hmm. under 2008 9 frame itself 
uh, especially after Chandrayaan 1 success mm -hmm. because uh, we had a good number of uh, international players in the mission Chandrayaan 1. Mm -hmm. uh, America had a very good, very good presence, uh, European countries had a presence and J Jaxa had a presence, Bulgaria had mm -hmm. a presence. Uh, but unfortunately, we could not accommodate Russian system there. So, mm -hmm. they had an interest on this. So, that way, I think we are trying to connect it. But now, we are, we are back into the yeah. uh, thing. So, that way, I don't think it's a race. I think if you recall, even Chandrayaan on mission, hmm. uh, after our launch uh, uh, in 2008, hmm. uh, 2009, uh, another mission from Yellow Row, from hmm. US came. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. It, it, it was looking like a competition, but it's not competition. I think yeah. they were trying to uh, look at the... This time, the mission configuration was something similar to our Chandrayaan 1, a mm -hmm. polar mission, mm -hmm. which, on, which, which previously they have not done. So, yes. that, that has happened there. So, similarly, when you look at here, our Mangalyan went. Mm -hmm. uh, within the few days of that, even Mavan also was launched. Yes, true. Okay. It, is, it is not a competition. It is, they have their own program, our own mm -hmm. program. It, it's such a coincidence happened. Yeah. I think it is, it, is a, it, it, is not, it is not like in the what has happened in the Cold War time. Mm -hmm. So, back to the moon, I feel it's showing the signs of uh, possible peaceful coexistence of everybody. Mm -hmm. So probably on the NAR, in South Pole when we land, uh, around 20 kilometer away, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, uh, Luna 25 yeah. and as well as our Vikram uh, started sending messages back to that. Mm -hmm. I think that shows uh, the humanity can coexist in a peaceful way. And explore further. Explore further. So yeah. one question that a lot of enthusiasts have is uh, the time taken by uh, the Russian Luna mission mm -hmm. and Chandrayaan 3. Why is there a difference?